I just noticed I got a little baby going. Good job. So can I tell you, I just spent 15 minutes trying to figure out how to pronounce this plant. And based on my YouTube searches, Google searches, no one knows. Like somebody I know out there is saying the, the scientific name correctly, but they're not saying it in any videos that I watched. So I'm just gonna wing it and hope that it's good enough. Hi, I'm Megan, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna be talking about one of the most drama llama plants I've ever had. And that is the Calathea lietzi. I'm gonna write it down here. It's known as the white fusion Calathea. And this one is my third, I think. Let's call it third. And <laughs> it is a temperamental beast, but if you can get its settings right, it will flourish and become one of your most favorite plants ever. I call this the poor variegated monstera because it's still kind of thin, not really as compared to like the normal crazy prices that you see for variegated monsteras, but it, it kind of gives you the same display at less than half the price. First, let's do a brief overview. I don't know where it's from. That's just my research says that it is from Central and South America, but it was discovered in a greenhouse in Malaysia by Tayan Yam. I hope I said that right. So I'm not sure if we're all just kind of assuming that it's grown where regular Calatheas grow or it was created in a lab and isn't actually from anywhere. I'm giving you both sides. It's either Malaysia or Central and South America. Now, there are two types of white fusion Calathea. There's the standard and there's the Stella. Honestly, there's not that much of a difference overall. Stella has a variegation pattern that's a bit more feathery and will have a little bit more pink in it, but not a lot. Honestly, if you got one or the other and you weren't sure which one it is, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Stellas also do have slightly bigger leaves and will grow a little bit higher. But again, it's not so drastic that you should seek out a Stella or should seek out a standard. Whatever you can find that's cheapest, go for it. And just a couple of fun facts about it. It is Calathea or prayer plant. So at night, it will close up shop and raise all of its leaves. And it was first discovered in 2007. So this is still kind of like a teenager. It hasn't been around very long. Or it hasn't, it wasn't discovered until recently. So if it is a Calathea, it is pet friendly. So it's okay around cat, dogs, and according to ASPCA, horses. In terms of coloring, you can see that it typically has a really beautiful blend of greens and white. And the level of white it will have is really dependent on the area that it's in. It, if it has enough, essentially, if it has enough chlorophyll, you're going to get really cool white patterns. There will also be some shades of pink or this really beautiful maroon on the underside of the leaves. And Will it ever flower? Probably not as a house plant. They have been known to flower in the wild, but for the most part, you probably shouldn't expect to see any flowers. If you do, they're white and they're very pretty, kind of feathery looking, like with most Calatheas. Kind of looks like a Christmas cactus bloom. Although, no, probably not. Don't worry, you're probably not going to see it. I'm sorry. Now, as you'll probably see on this video and other YouTube videos, one of the things this thing is known for is being finicky and being a big drama queen because it needs not only typical Calathea care, but extra Calathea care because of the white. So let's talk about care tips. Light, your best bet is going to be bright indirect light to keep the coloring. Water, since the tropical plant prefers to keep things kind of moist, but you don't want to get it so wet that it starts to accrue root rot. Essentially, water it weekly, but kind of dig your finger in and see how the soil feels. If you pull out your finger and it has soil on it, that means it's moist, it's doing okay. If it comes out clean, you know it's time to water. And make sure, like, I know I tell you all the time on all of my other plant care videos to use distilled or rainwater, but use distilled or rainwater. This do not use tap. That is one of the reasons this guy gets so finicky and dies quickly is from the heavy mineral water. Use distilled, use aquarium water like I do, and I'll link my video of my whole water routine up there, or rainwater that is like non-negotiable. In terms of fertilizer, you can do it once a month during its growing season, 
actually through spring through autumn, I would say stop and fall. That's when it's going to, you know, want time to rest and recoup. And I like to use Schultz liquid all purpose plant food. It has all purpose. Believe me, panned on all of my plants, no problem. Temperature, it can do pretty well in your standard house. It usually wants something around 60 to 80 degrees. Again, remember, this is a tropical plant that wants humidity, that wants hot, humid climates. So as long as that's around, like, don't go lower than 60. But speaking of humidity, this guy wants things humid, like around 85% humidity. So that's why it's really, if you have a bathroom that has windows in it, like shaded windows, this, this is your plant. This is the best plant for that area because it wants a steamy, humid, like, oh, it's too thick. The humidity is too thick. I can't do this. But and can I tell you, paradoxically, so that's normally the advice that we give all of us, but mine has been doing really well. Like it's doing well on a spot on a west facing window that's shaded, that has blinds, but we have a radiator right under the window and it ends up blowing on this. So you would think like, oh my God, that's going to dry it out. And except for like a couple of these two crunchies, not really. So I don't know if this one's a freak or it's just surviving my abuse. I don't know. But FYI, most likely would want humidity. If you want to propagate this, unfortunately, you can't do it by just clipping a leaf. What you want to do instead is look for groupings. And I can actually show you on this guy looking at my monitor so you can see. So I can't do this. Sorry, guys. So you see, like, here's the plant and you can see it's kind of divided right here and right here. So if I wanted to propagate this, I would just take the whole thing out, clean it up and try and separate the roots. Keep in mind, though, these roots are incredibly fragile, so don't pull too hard. And you can try propagating in water, but since it's going to be a clump of plant, your best bet is soil. In terms of repotting, maybe once a year, but honestly, don't worry if it likes where it lives and stays there for a while. These are, despite them being drama llamas, they are pretty chill about their pot. So once you notice like signs of being root bound, then I would repot it again early in the spring. Don't do it during winter when it's relaxing and, you know, getting up energy for the next year. Do it right before you hit that growth season and it should be really happy. So let's talk about the problems that people have with this plant. And I feel like that could be a whole like two hour lecture <laughs> because this plant has a lot of problems. It is very finicky. It's very pest friendly. And the high humidity requirements just means that this is a prima donna. So if you notice brown spots, see if I see any. I don't. I'm doing well. That means you're using bad water. Use rainwater, distilled water, or like me, aquarium water. Brown, crispy leaves. That means it's thirsty and needs some water. However, with mine specifically, I think it's more the, the heat register blowing the hot air on it because this thing, like if I got in any wetter, I would be in trouble. So if you have brown crunchy leaves, that probably means it's too much water. It's pulling all the resources into the root system to prevent it from rotting. Or you've put it in a place that has hot air draft like me. If your plant starts losing its white parts and you start seeing more of a green pattern on it, think about it this way. This is a variegated plant, which means that it is getting enough chlorophyll in the green parts so it can leave these white parts alone. It's fine. Those white parts can come along for the ride. We got everything we need in these green parts. But if it's not getting enough light to produce chlorophyll to create photosynthesis, it's going to start taking that space back. It's going to start reclaiming all of this white and turning it back into green. So what you want to do is move it to a sunnier spot. If your leaves are curling, which is another big thing that this plant is known for. One, remember, it is a calathea, so it will close up shop at night. Next, one of the biggest culprits of curling leaves is bad water, mineral rich water, tap water. Again, please use distilled or rainwater or aquarium water on this. Don't give it tap water. That's just like, that's a big problem for a plant like this. Another reason is that it's not getting enough humidity in the air. And lastly, it might be getting too much light. So check the area, see if it's getting like direct sun and try and diffuse that if possible. Get blinds or semi-transparent curtains or something. Think about the natural location this calathea would be in. It's usually on the ground in a tropical region under the canopy. So it needs that filtered light. If it's getting direct light, it's going to start to burn or its leaves are going to start to curl and try and conserve the resources to protect the plant. Last, 
but not least, this delicate drama filled plant is a pest haven, especially spider mites, aphids, thrips, and mealybugs. So keep a really close eye on the leaves. One of the best parts of it being so variegated and so different is that you can see pests on it much easier than you could an all green plant like a peperomia or something like that and triage it as quickly as possible. What you're going to want to do is thoroughly wipe down every leaf front and back and spray it every few days with neem oil. Keep an eye on it because infestations happen much faster than you think. Make sure you become a helicopter parent with it until the infestation is gone. So that is it. I'm going to go put it back from once it came and actually I'm going to rotate it so that this side gets a little bit more love from the sun. Oh, yeah, good luck with your white fusion calathea. I wish you all the best with it. Again, this is my third because the first two, we won't talk about it. So I hope that yours thrives. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and let me know. But I'll see you in the next video.